Uh, now, uh, few political parties have had a tougher five years than the Lib Dems after several brutal election results. They've just elected their fifth permanent leader in as many years, the former Energy Secretary, Sir Ed Davey. Is he the man to succeed where others have failed and turn things around for his party? Well, let's ask him. He joins us now. Uh, thank you for being on the programme. Congratulations uh, on your victory. Um, frankly, of course, you've got a mountain to climb. I'm going to start off with a question lots of our viewers might be asking. What exactly is the point of the Lib Dems? Well, Liberal Democrats stand for some really key principles on social justice, on equality, on civil liberties, on internationalism, on protecting our environment. But our message hasn't been getting over to people over the last few elections. And what I'm saying as the leader is the party needs to understand that. We need to wake up and smell the coffee and we need to go out to the country and we need to listen. And we need to understand why people don't think we're on their side. We need to understand why people don't think we represent their values. And that listening exercise is something I'm going to lead over the coming months. I started it um, on uh, Friday in Stockport when I did a, a three-hour lunch shift in a fish and chip shop and talked to the owners, Ann and Bob, talked to their staff, talked to their customers, and really began to understand the issues that they face, their, their problems, their fears, as well as their hopes and aspirations. And I think that listening exercise is the way that we can make ourselves relevant to people and, uh, and rebuild. Uh, relevant is the word. Um, at the same time, though, others have tried before and failed. Tim Farron, Vince Cable, Joe Swinson. Why should you be any different? Well, the, my colleagues uh, did sterling jobs, but it was a difficult environment. Um, obviously, the biggest issue of the day then was Brexit. We took a particular position. I've always felt that we needed to not just be a one-trick party. We need to talk about a whole range of issues. I'm particularly keen on the economy, on jobs, uh, making sure particularly that this recession that we are the party, talking about the economy, about green jobs and the greener economy. I've talked about a fairer society and a more caring country. I want the Liberal Democrats to be known for the, all the values and all the ideas that we have. But before we start talking about our policies, I think it's very important that we listen and we shape our agenda with our liberal values but we shape that agenda to the concerns and fears, hopes and dreams of the British people. So I, I'm not going to sort of lay out the policy agenda of the future. What I'm going to lay out is how I'm going to listen to people around the country, the whole country. So, you know, you say you don't want to lay out a policy agenda, and I get that, you've only just been in the job, but at the same time, listening to you, these things are quite vague, I guess. You know, listening to people, uh, saying that you want to be, you know, firm on the environment, uh, on, on being fair, on the society. But what's your single radical policy, the kind of thing that's actually going to cut through to the people you spoke to in the fish and chip shop? Well, um, Sophie, with respect, if I'm doing a listening exercise, it's not about one... Uh, shift, lunchtime shift in a fish and chip shop. That is the start of a whole so set of... what's the single radical uh, policy that, you're, that you want to offer? Well, but, 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 Sophie, I want to listen first. And I'm sorry if you find that vague and unsatisfying, but I think it's what uh, we ought to do in the Liberal Democrats. We've been sent a message in the last three elections which have been very disappointing and, and we've not been successful. Uh, and I want to face up to that. And the first way of facing up to that is not setting out your radical agenda is actually listening. And it's a serious exercise. Um, it's going to go on for months and months. I'm going to go to every part of the country, and I'm going to be there with people in their jobs, in their organisations, uh, in their businesses. I'm going to be talking to people who are carers, people who are teachers, people in their community. And that is how I think, as leader of the Liberal Democrats, I can then really understand people's issues and, and fears and hopes. And let's remember... We are at an extraordinary moment in our country's history, in our world's history. COVID is changing everything. It's had a dramatic impact on the country's health, hits particular families tragically, and, of course, it's having a massive impact on our economy and the world's relations. One's got to understand, first of all, how people are coping with that and how politicians can reach out and help them, but also what they're thinking about the future post-COVID. You know, what, what, what do they hope to, that, that happens after this? Do you want to go back to the status ante, what it was like before? Or do they have a hope that we can build something better? Uh, and I want to listen to that to understand the that, what their dreams and hopes are for a post-COVID world.
we've got the message on the listening exercise uh, loud and clear. Now, in an interview today, uh, David Frost, the UK's chief Brexit negotiator, said the UK won't blink first in the negotiations. What do you think the chances of a trade deal are? 50%? Higher? Lower? Oh, so it's very difficult to know if you're not in the room. But I do feel that the government is being very reckless and risky. We're in a recession now. It uh, wasn't foreseen when, when Brexit was first talked of and during the referendum and, and at the last election. This recession due to COVID, some people say, may be the worst recession, deepest recession for 300 years. And in that context, the idea of a no-deal Brexit on top of the COVID recession I think would be a disaster for people's jobs, for people's livelihoods, for business up and down the country. And I thought it was uh, very noticeable last week when business was saying the government isn't prepared the borders properly, whether it's a deal or a no deal, they're not ready. What has this government been doing? You know, it's had a shambolic handling of, of COVID. It's clearly not making the necessary preparations for a no-deal Brexit or any form of Brexit. And, you know, I am really, really struck by how businesses are becoming more alarmed about how this government is undertaking these negotiations. So <laughs> we're used to reading these headlines we, about how um, tough they're going to be. I want to know, are they going to be successful for people's jobs and people's livelihoods? We're um, running out of time, so just quickly. Um, could the Lib Dems campaign to rejoin the EU in the future? Look, we've opposed Brexit, everybody knows that, um, but the government got a majority, they've pushed it through, um, and now the issue is, is there going to be a deal or a no deal, the shape of that? And then beyond that, the issue is, can we have good relations with our European is friends that, and neighbours? Yes no? As a pro-European party... Well, we are a... Le, Sophie, we are a pro-European party. I'm passionately pro-European. I want to be as close to our European friends and colleagues as possible because that's in the interest of the people of Britain. OK, I'm not clear on that answer still. No, I mean, I can't see us at the next election being anything other than pro-European, but... I also think um, we need to face the situation as it is. Britain will have left the European Union. I think the idea that people want to re revisit this uh, in a two or three years' time, okay. um, I think that's for, for the birds. But we will remain passionately okay. pro-European, determined to get the benefits of working with our friends and neighbours. And just finally, uh, Extinction Rebellion. Uh, a few moments ago, Diane Abbott said that there were uh, the protests that they did outside those printing presses were legal, that they were in the uh, tradition of the suffragettes uh, in direct action. Do you agree with that? No, I mean, Liberal Democrats have been passionate about tackling climate change. As Climate Change Secretary, I nearly quadrupled Britain's renewable power. We won very ambitious targets at the EU and the United Nations. That is the way we tackle climate change, working together. I think we need to bring the country together to realise we have a climate emergency alongside the COVID health and economic uh, emergency. My concern with what we saw was it actually divides people. It can undermine the message about the climate emergency. Uh, and uh, I fear when you damage the free press in particular, uh, that is shooting yourself in the foot. You know, there was an interview uh, with David Attenborough in one of those newspapers that didn't get distributed. David Attenborough is, you know, the environmentalist par excellence. He has a lot to say about climate change and how we protect our environment. I think stopping people reading David Attenborough is not a good message. OK, Ed Davey, thank you very much for being on the programme today.